I hope you, uh, everybody is okay. Everybody is good. Everybody is happy today. This is the second day of the week for us. On today is Tuesday, August 10. And it's 2021. We are going to do something like a little game before we start. It's called short board. Okay. okay. I'm going to write a, song, uh, a word here, and you have to give me any name with that letter. Let's say, Jasmine, give me a name of anything, an object person, anything. Uh, could you repeat, please, teacher? Give me a name of anything, like a name of uh, something, like a table, like table, uh, house, anything, or name, name of a person. Name of person. Uh, our yes, class name? Whatever, anything. Anything. Uh, um, Maria? Maria. Yes. We're going to write it like this. Let's see who is faster. Okay, you have to give me names with any of these letters, A, A, R, I, A. Names, teacher, names. Yeah. Uh, with, in English? Anybody, mm. anybody, in English. Uh, yeah. Mouse. Matias. We don't have to do names. Okay, names. So I have M, could be mom, for example. Mike, give me more. Marcos. Matias. Remember, they don't have to be names. Objects, things, places, countries. Come on, come on, M. Okay. Marruecos. Marruecos. It is a country. It is Morocco. It's not in English. Come on, go ahead, put it. Um, um, uh, um. Miami. Miami. Mariana. Okay. Try to give me name of something, objects. Let's go with A. Uh, colors, can, uh, amarillo. In English. Ah, uh, uh, okay. We're, we're learning English. A, names A, objects, like Apple. Alejandra. We're working with names in English, remember. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. It's for you to think. Architecture. Amazing. Architect.
Good afternoon, teacher. Good afternoon, Maru. Remember names, anything, adjectives, adverbs, uh, pronouns, uh, nouns, um, etc. Appearance. Alphabet. Animal, alphabet. And we are, well, we have to start with the letter A in this case. Say one Appearance. more. Okay. Appearance. Annoying. Annoying. Continue. Away. Continue. Another. August. Another. Anyway. April. Okay. Hold on. Anything? Okay. One more? Anyway. April. April. August. Air. August. Around. Around. And. We have and and. Aunt. 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 Yeah, it's here. Aunt. Aunt. No, aunt. 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 Uh, with T. A. N. D. Yeah, it's here. No, with D. A. N. D. And. Okay. And. Okay. R. Next letter is R. Uh, ring. Ring. Reference. Restaurant. Relax. Relaxing. Yeah, we have relax. Reach. Run. Reach. What other do you say? Run. Reason. Reason. Wrong. Read. Say one more time. Yes, me. Uh, read. Re? Runner. Re? Runner. Re? R E A V. E A V. Re? Yes. Runner. Runner. Restroom. One more. Realist. Rumi. Realist. Realize. Yes. Realize. Really? Realize. Okay, excellent. Let's go with I. Letter I. Idea. Idea. Italian. Islands. Interesting. Italian. Island. Interesting. Italian. Impress. 
Inside. Irregular. Inside. Impolite. Inexpensive. Impossible. Important. I don't want. Impossible and why else, Jasmine? Important. Important. Important, yes. Okay, let's continue with the last one. And then you're going to do it by people, by person, okay? Let's see how much, 4.45, no, just this one. So we have time. A, the red A, you don't repeat the last, the first A, remember. Okay. Different words. Uh, angry. Angry. Mm -hmm. um, Eagle. Apron. Okay. America. Art. Okay. Alphabet. Alphabet. Come on, come on, who did? You're quiet. Yes, teacher. <laughs> I was thinking. Afraid. Say one more time. Afraid. Afraid. Us. As. April. A S. Yeah, us, you said, right? April. Oh, oh, us. April, you have April here. Us. Adjective. Yeah, us. Okay, yeah. Adjective. Adjective. Uh, Fred. Yeah, we have a friend here. And so Our Answer. Arm teacher. A R M. Arm. Arm. What's arm? A R. -M. Arabic. Arabic. Okay. Uh, who did you finish? A R. Huh? A R M. Arm. Arm. Ravi. Angry. You say angry. Angry. Agree. Agree. Uh, agree. Uh -huh. Yes, agree. Come on. One more. Anagram. Actress. Actor. Actor. Felix, say one more time. Curry. How do you spell that? After. Uh, Felix, how do you spell it? Uh, mm, uh, curry, I go see. Yeah, but you don't have to spell it. Airplane. Aim frame? Airplane. How do you spell it? 
A I R P L A N E Airplane 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 Yes Airplane Auto yes. Auto What's that? Felix. Aro. How do you spell it? Mm, Flecha in English. Aro. Aro. W. Aro. Yes. Yes, Aro. No Aro. Aro. Double, double R. Aro. Absolutely. Absolutely. Always. About. We have about, above, and about. After. Afternoon. After. We have many, many words with A, right? Okay, that's it for, for this game. Um, good job, good job. Um, we try to do it next next week too, with more people. Today, I don't know why, but we have just, just you. Um, I think it's just four or five. So we try, we learn more vocabulary and we learn the spelling of the word. So today we are going to finish this lesson. Uh, tomorrow we have a review of uh, unit one, two, and three. And then the oral, like uh, the written exam is gonna be on Thursday. Then I will explain to you about the, the oral. That would be on Monday. But let's continue with this one, please. So as you remember, we started this lesson yesterday, lesson D, about Proverbs. Did you do the homework? Yes or not? Yes, teacher. Do you find the Proverbs? Okay, we're going to read this. Um, Let me see how many, we have four people. Good reading, please. Okay. Jasmine, red, yellow, blue, or green? You got your favorite color? My favorite is red. red. What about you, Felix? Uh, for this green. Green, okay. Maru? Uh, yellow. Yellow, uh, who did blue, of course. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's do some reading, please. Uh, we can start. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Remember, we're going to learn about proverbs in this lesson. So this is about reading comprehension. And of course, we're going to write something about it, about some proverbs. Okay, Yasmin, you can start. Okay. Uh, to read teacher. 
Yes, we are going to read. Okay. Mm. The wisdom that binds us together. Proverbs exist in every language and culture and are a way of passing down for wisdom or common sense from generations to generations. Who doesn't remember a time when they were struggling with a problem or dilemma and someone cured a proverb that aptly summed, summed up or explained the situation? Of fair in love and war. Describes the injustice that is often encountered in a romantic relationships and may help some of us accept it. Absence makes the heart grow. Founder, it's meant to give hope when a loved one is far away. When that same relationship is brought to an end by distance, we hear our sight, our mind. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. um, question for you. What do you understand about this paragraph, the red part? And the first time. Yes. Anyone? No, no not only Jasmine. Mm, the proverb exists in every language. Well, that's one point, yes. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's Spanish, right? We have many in Spanish, French, German. What do you think? Give me your opinion, please. All the cultures or the countries have the, the proverbs now? Yes. Anybody else, please, who did? Mm -hmm. it? Okay. Well, I understood that the proverbs exist in in every part, in every way of living, that we can use it in any in any situation. Yes. Uh, do you have any questions or any of these words, guys? Any for you? Wisdom. Can remember wisdom. wisdom. Yes, is wisdom, wisdom is more than intelligent, right? Wise person comes from, from wise. Like maybe you were you, your father has some wisdom, your grandparents. Wisdom comes from experience, from life. Wisdom. Sabiduría. Not everybody is wisdom, right? Some people are intelligent, but they are not wisdom. Wisdom is about knowledge, about life experiences. Okay, let's continue. Um, yellow parts. Me, teacher. Yes. Uh, Proverbs has lasted for thousands of years, probably because they are so memorable. Some are short and concise. Like practice makes perfect, and haste makes waste. Why others use a poetic language shows a metaphors, repetition, and rhymes. Uh, the metaphor out of the frying and pan into the fire is easy to visualize. See, when you are faced with a difficult situation that just got even worse, the repetition of the consonant T makes it easy to remember. It takes to tango, two to tango. The rim, the repetition of the consonant, I'm sorry, the rim when the cast away the mice will play. 
comes to mind as soon as to the boss lives on vacation and repetition of the structures in once beaten, twice shy, makes this an extremely catchy press. All right. Phrase, the last one is phrase, not press. Phrase. Phrase, yes. Phrase. A metaphor, it's a metaphor, yes, metaphor, visualize, visualize here, visualize is the rhyme. Visualize. A uh, rhyme, and here you have rhyme. The, the rhyme. rhyme. Yes. Um, also, I didn't tell you, Jasmine, you said it's generation to generation. No generation. Okay. Remember the G is pronounced like G, G, generation. Generation. Generation to generation. Generation. Yes. I hear quoted. This is a past tense of quote. Okay. Sum up. Sum up. Sum up. Here. Sum up. Sum I'm putting all together, like summarizing. Um, okay, let's go with blue. Good it. Okay, teacher, yes. Some scholar who study proverbs look for examples that are unique to a particular culture as a key to understanding cultural differences. Other focus on the proverbs that appear in almost every language as a way of defining a common wisdom that binds all humans together. Proverbs don't always offer up universal truth. However, and they are frequently contradictory. People say, clothes make the man. To reflect the importance of appearance as part of one's personal identity. On the other hand, they also say, you can judge a, you can judge a book by its cover. To point out that appearances can be deceptive and with Handsome is a handsome dust. They stress the value of good behavior over good looks. Yes, excellent. Excellent. Good job. Um, well, here some scholars who study proverbs look for examples that are unique to a particular culture. Also, we have some sayings. We say sayings or proverbs is the same. Like the Mexican say is saying, uh, they are very similar. All of them are similar. Of course, they are different. They use different words, but it depends on the culture. Excellent. Uh, let's continue with the last one, please, Felix. Okay. Uh, so, why proverbs can help you grasp some universal shared wisdom? They also force you to recognize that life is complex and that there are no easy answers. The complexity of the human condition as reflected in Proverbs is yet another thing that is shared by people around the world. Okay, good. Remember, this is human, no? Human, human, you pronounce the H. Human. Yeah, sometimes the H is uh, not confusing, but sometimes like honor, you don't pronounce the H, right? Honest. But in this case, human, yes, is pronounced. Sometimes it's silent. Like hypocrite, hypocrisy, um, many words. However, however, you have to however. How, 
right? Some honor, you don't pronounce it. Uh, yes, I recommend you to read a little bit more. Uh, practice on reading, Felix. So you don't, have, you don't hesitate when you read. Excellent. What do you, okay, let me ask you something. What do you understand in general about this topic, about Proverbs? Give me your opinion about what you read here. If I ask you now, what are Proverbs? What would you say? Could it? Now you know what a proverb is. Uh -huh. If I okay. ask you, what are proverbs? Let's see, you're, well, the, uh -huh. you're the teacher. Well, let's role play. Okay. Right. Tell me, what well, are proverbs? Well, a proverb, proverb um, is a simple way of saying an expression that is based on a common experience and also proverbs are often metaphorical and use poetic languages and also rhymes. And people use it for, for making an example of their real life or something. Yes, yes, excellent. Good answer. All right, Maru, what about you? If I ask you what? Are proverbs? Can you tell me what okay. proverbs are. Okay, the proverb. It's um. Uh, uh, the people use the proverb when they have the problems or dilemma, no? And all the cultures has the 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 proverbs. And in a proverb, we can find the the rhymes, the metaphors. And phrase metaphors and and the metaphors always use the repetitions. Yes. What is if I ask you what what is a metaphor? Uh Maru. Sorry, teacher. If I ask you, if I ask you, can you explain me what a metaphor is? What is a metaphor? Yes, a metaphor, yes. Uh, metaphor is um, a, when the people say the the words in another words using different in another way. Uh, yes. They try to use different way to say something, right? Yes, correct. What we the same meaning? Okay, uh, Jasmine, what Jasmine is busy now? Yes, teacher. With the <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> you're, you're late after after Felix. Felix, now that you have read, you have read this about proverbs. Now you can tell me the answer. What is a proverb? Mm. The proverb is described and uses that is often encountered in a romantic relationship and has some of, some of you accept the things better. Uh, well, some of those you read from here, but if you give me your own words, your own definition. Do not read from here. And I ask you again, what is a proverb? Give me your own word. Uh, the proverb. Uh, the proverb. Yes. Is with when the Proverbs help uh, accept is with the people don't accept. O sea, que ayuda a que las personas se entiendan mejor.
Well, remember, not the program, a program first. Um, I don't know if I understand, I, understand, I understand what you're talking about, what you're saying. So you mean proverbs help people to understand much better. To understand what? What do they uh, have to understand? The, I think. Yes. Okay, so that's uh, what's your definition. What about you, Yasmin? Tell me, what do you understand for proverbs? Uh, yes, teacher. Um, the proverbs uh, are used uh, for different different people around the world and different uh, generations. Our grandparents always say some one of these. For example, when the cats away, the mice will play. It's very common. Yeah. And but... yes, and and this proverb uh, you can say in different situations. Yes. And different situation our lives, and it's a funny way to say the things. Yes. Yes, teacher. Well, the main point. Remember, the main point of proverbs is because they they show wisdom, right? They use expressions or sentences, like they play with words, but they show some wisdom that I related to your, maybe your problems or to, to your daily life experience. That's what they mean. Wisdom, they have some wisdom. Especially those proverbs, they are invented or they are made by someone who is very wisdom. Uh, they are in any culture, in, any, in every language. So that's what proverbs are, they show wisdom. They play okay. with words, they play with words and uh, sentences. So you try to find a meaning in this because they relate to what you do. Uh, for example, this one, uh, they were talking about, well, we have many, many of those, many of those. Mm -hmm. But we have some questions, specific questions about this reading. Let's try to answer this. Okay, excellent. Um, Felix, can you read instructions, please? Okay. Read the article again. Can you find these things compared with a partner? Let's do it here. Let's do number one. Okay. Uh, uh, function proverbs serve in different language and cultures. Is it article? So you need to find it in the article. Well, let's let's do it in pairs. We have six sentences. Help each other. You need to find these in the article. Okay. okay underline it or just pay attention what they are and just let me know after the exercise. I know we are just a few today, so we are four. Yes, with two teams. Please help each other and try to find it in the article. Okay. Let's have um, five minutes. It's 5.13. Until five eighteen. Go to the breakout rooms, please.
All right, let's continue, please. Number one, we said a bunch of converse serves in different languages and cultures. Where do you find that? Where do you find it? In the first part of a teacher to the top. Yes, it's in the first paragraph. Yes. Can you read that to me, please? Justin? Yes. Uh, proverbs exit in every language and culture and are a way of passing down for wisdom. Yes, excellent. Number two. Please, mm. you know, uh, Hudid or Maru. In paragraph number three. Can you read the sentence, please, number two? Uh, two different ways colors look at proverbs. 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 Can you read it, please? Uh, two different ways colors look at proverbs. I mean, can you in the, in the, in the... Ah, in the paragraph, sorry. Yes. Some scholars who study proverbs look, for example, that are unique to a particular culture as a key to understand cultural differences. <clears throat> okay, let me try to move it. But it says, I think it says, Two different ways scholars look at proverbs, right? Some scholars who study proverbs look for examples that are unique to a particular culture as a key to understanding cultural differences. Others focus on the proverbs, so we have the second one there. Others focus on the proverbs that appear in almost every language as a way of defining a common wisdom that binds all humans together. Okay, number three, Felix. Yes, teacher. Two proverbs that are memorable, memorable because they use lemon. Uh, practice makes perfect and haste made waste waste in the second paragraph in second paragraph here the ones that use rhyme say one more time the proverbs please say the proverbs one more time practice makes perfect and Case made with. How do you say was the waste? Okay, let me check the question. What was the question? Two proverbs that are memorable because they use rhyme, right? You say that. I need here in the second paragraph. Practice makes perfect and a haste makes waste. Yes. All is out of sight, out of mind. No, I didn't understand. What do you say? Um, the proverbs and two proverbs that are memorable because they use dream is Practice makes perfect and has made waste. Yes, it's proverbs, proverbs, not proverbs, and it's rhyme. The word is rhyme. Yes. Okay. Rhyme. Okay. Um, number four. Um, could it?
Number four, three proverbs that are memorable because they repeat consonants, words, or structure. Well, I think in paragraph um, three. Okay. I'm sorry, one, two, three, four. What are the proverbs? Handsome is a handsome dust. Is in the fourth paragraph? Four, I think. Here. Mm -hmm. Or another, it takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. The repetition of the consonant make, make, makes, it, makes it easy to remember like that one. It takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. All right, what other one? Um. Once beaten, twice shy. Once bitten, right? That's a structure. The rhyme. Ah, okay. When the cat's away, the mice will play. So you have there the meaning of each one. Okay, number five, my, um, Jasmine. Five. Two pairs of proverbs that are contra contradictory. Yes. Uh, Teacher, I wrote and and in paragraph number number two. Number two. Yes. All right. What are those proverbs? And repetition of the structure in once beaten, twice shy. Uh, Made this an extremely catchy phrase. Do you think they are contradictory? I think so, teacher. Or did you read paragraph? Ah, uh, 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 no, teacher. And, and number one, two, three, four. Proverbs yeah. don't always offer up universal truth. However, and they are frequently contradictory. People say, close made the man to reflect the importance of appearance as part of one's, of one's personal identity. identity. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very similar to the one when we say como te vente tratan, right? Yes. Similar, it's not the same. Gloves makes the man. Excellent. Yes. Okay, um, number six, last one, please. Uh, who did? Or Maru, anyone? All right, two things we can learn when we study proverbs from different cultures. Two things we can learn. That's, you need to, maybe it's here. In paragraph number one, two, three, four, five. So why proverbs can help us grasp some universal shared wisdom? They also for us to recognize that life is complex and that there are no easy answers. The complexity of the human condition as a reflecting progress is yet another thing that is shared by people around the world. Yes. All right. Say, Maru, if you give me your idea about this, like summarize. 
What do you understand in this last question? That's gonna be for everybody. But let's say Maru now. So to understand the last question, number six. So it's about everything, right? Two things we can learn when we study proverbs from different cultures. It's right what Maru just read. But what do you understand? Give me your own words. Maru. You go okay. First. Okay, teacher. Um, uh, for example, the proverb we can understand the different way in different uh, countries or different cultures. <laughs> Yes. It's, yeah, it's, it's universally reason, right? It's around the world. Yes. It also tells us, tell us that life is not easy. Life is complex. And there's not always easy answers, right? Yes. I mean, Sometimes or always use the proverbs when we have the problems, no? Or right. When you have the problem at the moment, right? You remember the problems. Yes. Excellent. What do you think it about this last part? Like the conclusion. Okay, I think that we can learn uh, how the life is or how we can live the life. As you said, the life is not easy. Sometimes it's, it's complex, but uh, the proverb reflect and uh, how to how to see the life and in any situation. So we can apply those proverbs in any kind of situation that we have. It could be bad or good. Right, right. It depends on the type, the kind of situation we are excellent. Well, that's the idea. Okay, let's do this because we have to finish this lesson. Listening or speaking, favorite proverbs. Remember, it's proverbs, not proverbs. Proverbs, verbs, verbs. Proverbs. Proverbs. All right, can you guess the meaning of the proverbs below? Discuss with a partner. Let's see, Felix, can you read the first one, please? Here. Mm, yes, teacher. Every Tuesday has it Sunday, Spanish. Yes. Um, Jasmine, can you read the second one? Yes, teacher. If you're afraid of the wolves, don't go into the wolves. Wolves. Yeah. If you're afraid of the wolves, don't go into the woods. It's into the woods. It's from a uh, Russian. Russian. It's Russian. 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 Uh, Maru, next. Uh, her bread is better than nothing. Portuguese. Portuguese, yes. Put it. You can expect both end of a sugar cane to be sweet. Okay. Do you understand any of this? Tell me. Do you have an idea about any of this? The meaning. For the first one, every Every Tuesday has its Sunday. Uh, for example, we can to rest or do something funny Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> Remember, this is a metaphor, right? I guess it says like every beginning, right? Has an ending. Something you start now. You finish it today or some other time or tomorrow. 
all of the most of the the, the proverbs are metaphors, right? Okay, give me another idea, Maru or Rudigit or Felix. Well, you... number one. Any of these. Sorry? Any. One, two, three, four. Uh, for example, in number one, I, I think all, every day we can uh, have a good day. Yes. Number two, teacher. Number two. I understood that if you don't know any, if you don't know about the problem, if you don't know how to do that, I mean, in any situation, you don't have to, to, to go in because you don't know. Perhaps uh, there are some problems for you. Yes. That you might find, right? Uh -huh. If you don't know, you don't have to 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 go in or to do it or something. Yeah, there is a Spanish. Well, it's a Spanish saying that's from Puerto Rico. I don't know if you call from Puerto Rico or somewhere. That's because I've been there many times. It says, "Don't look for anything that has, if you you hasn't you if you haven't lost it." No busques lo que no se te ha perdido. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly right. No busques lo que no se te ha perdido. I mean, when you, like you are looking for problems, why do you have to look for problems, right? If you don't have it now. Hard bread is better than nothing. What do you think about that? Felix, give me your opinion about this one. We do that this every day, right, in our life. Remember, this is a metaphor. We are not talking about specifically bread. Felix, what do you think about this? Felix? Uh, yes, sorry, teacher. I had a little problem with my internet. Uh, what did you say? Uh, yeah, what do you think about this proverb? Hard bread is better than nothing. Mm. In your words. Well, mm. Enseñanza? Yeah. What does it teach you? What do you learn from this proverb? But red is better than nothing. Give me your opinion. Do you understand it or not? Our bread is better than nothing. Uh, I don't understand the proverb, teacher. Yes. I don't. I don't know uh, lo que quiere decir. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to tell me in Spanish, but it's okay. Um, you can expect both ends, both ends of a sugar cane to be sweet. What would you say? You can give me your own words. Uh, anyone, Pudit, Maru, Jasmine. You can expect both ends of a sugar cane to be sweet, right? This is Chinese and it's very, you know, the wisdom of this one is very is good. I like this one. 
like sometimes life life sometimes life gives you good things right beautiful things and you don't complain right because they are good but what what happens when you are you everything goes bad you are sick uh, you don't have money or you have problems you complain right so that's what it means. They it can cannot be sweet all the time. So that's life. Happy, sad, good, bad, anything. All right, let's listen, please, and pay attention. The real meaning. First, you need to number one, two, three, four, depending what you hear. Page 29, Lesson D, Proverbs 2, Listening and Speaking, Favorite Proverbs B, Listen to four people talk about their favorite proverbs. Number the proverbs above, one to four. What do they mean? Did you guess the meaning correctly? One. I think I've been driving my family crazy lately. Ever since I was given that big promotion at work, I have all these new problems to deal with. And every night I come home totally worried and start complaining to everyone. And my grandmother always says to me, if you're afraid of the wolves, don't go into the woods. Like I chose to accept this promotion. So I have to accept all the problems that come with it. So that's become one of my favorite proverbs. I think it's partly because my grandmother is from Russia and it says something about her culture. You know, she grew up near a forest where there was a lot of danger. Two, my favorite proverb in Portuguese is hard bread is better than nothing. I like it because it reminds me that when times are bad, you have to be grateful for the little that you have. And I thought of this proverb the other day when I was talking to a friend of mine. She's living with her parents while she looks for a job and she isn't paying rent or anything because she's not earning any money. And she started complaining to me that she doesn't like the food her parents cook. Can you believe it? Three. My father is always quoting proverbs to me in Chinese. And my favorite one is, you can't expect both ends of a sugar cane to be sweet. He used it recently when I was complaining about my new apartment. You know, I'm glad I moved into the city, but I've really been bothered by all the noise. So I was telling my father this, and he responded with the proverb about the sugar cane. It means that you can't have the advantages of something without the disadvantages. It always makes me stop and think a bit. Four. You know, things haven't been so great lately. I feel like I've been hit with a whole bunch of problems all at once. But I have a favorite proverb that always makes me feel better. It's every Tuesday has its Sunday. That's what we say in Spanish to cheer people up. You know, it means there are always going to be some bad days, but there are going to be good days too. You just have to be patient. Excellent. Okay, were you able to number the pictures? What's number one? Are you okay? You want to listen one more time? Again, please, teacher. Okay, focus, please. Okay. Page 29, Lesson D, Proverbs 2, Listening and Speaking, Favorite Proverbs B, Listen to four people talk about their favorite proverbs. Number the proverbs above, one to four. What do they mean? Did you guess the meaning correctly? One. I think I've been driving my family crazy lately. 
ever since I was given that big promotion at work, I have all these new problems to deal with. And every night I come home totally worried and start complaining to everyone. And my grandmother always says to me, if you're afraid of the wolves, don't go into the woods. Like I chose to accept this promotion. So I have to accept all the problems that come with it. So that's become one of my favorite proverbs. I think it's partly because my grandmother is from Russia and it says something about her culture. You know, she grew up near a forest where there was a lot of danger. Two, my favorite proverb in Portuguese is hard bread is better than nothing. I like it because it reminds me that when times are bad, you have to be grateful for the little that you have. And I thought of this proverb the other day when I was talking to a friend of mine. She's living with her parents while she looks for a job and she isn't paying rent or anything because she's not earning any money. And she started complaining to me that she doesn't like the food her parents cook. Can you believe it? Three. My father is always quoting proverbs to me in Chinese. And my favorite one is, you can't expect both ends of a sugar cane to be sweet. He used it recently when I was complaining about my new apartment. You know, I'm glad I moved into the city, but I've really been bothered by all the noise. So I was telling my father this, and he responded with the proverb about the sugar cane. It means that you can't have the advantages of something without the disadvantages. It always makes me stop and think a bit. Four. You know, things haven't been so great lately. I feel like I've been hit with a whole bunch of problems all at once. But I have a favorite proverb that always makes me feel better. It's every Tuesday has its Sunday. That's what we say in Spanish to cheer people up. You know, it means there are always going to be some bad days, but there are going to be good days too. You just have to be patient. All right. Let's see, what's number one? If you're afraid you're of wolves, if you're afraid you of, of, the of the wolves. Yes. And what did she say it means? She gave an example of how her job, right? What did she say? About the promotion. Give me a similar example. If you're afraid of the wolves, don't go into the woods. Let's say Maru is a teacher, but she's promoted to be the principal, the director. But you know, when you are the director, you have many things to do. You have more responsibilities, right? Maybe you get more money, but you are responsible for the, the school, the teachers, the students, for everything. So that's what they say, right? It's similar. Okay, number two. Our breath, breath it's better. it's better than nothing. Okay, what well, can you tell me about this number two? Well, what I understood is was uh, that we we have to be happy uh, when we have uh, a little. Um, I mean, uh, we have to be happy with all of things that we uh -huh, we have. Yes, we have to be grateful. Grateful, okay. Yes. Thing we have, even we are, we have problems. If you have only big, you you play to eat. At least you have food, yeah. right? So you must be grateful with life. Okay. Yes. 
she talks about uh, she's, uh, she's friendly living with her, her parents and she was complaining about food. I mean, mm -hmm. we shouldn't complain. We are having, uh, I mean, we have to be grateful with life. Even the smallest thing, and at least we have health, right? Number three. Yes. What's number three? Uh, you can't expect of a sugar cane to be sweet. Okay, number three, you can expect for the ends of a sugar cane to be sweet. Okay. Any thoughts about this? What was the idea? What do you understand about this one? Felix, oh, Yasmin or Maru, put it, please. What do you understand about this Chinese proverb? Just tell me, be honest and say, I didn't understand it. Or can you repeat it again or say something? I understand teacher. Okay. What do you understand? Uh -huh. Me either, teacher. You didn't understand. All right. What about number four? Number four, of course, is a Spanish proverb, right? What did he say? Let's listen one more time, please. Page 29, lesson T, Proverbs 2, listening and speaking, favorite Proverbs. B, listen to four people talk about their favorite Proverbs. Number the Proverbs above, one to four. What do they mean? Did you guess the meaning correctly? One. I think I've been driving my family crazy lately. Ever since I was given that big promotion at work, I have all these new problems to deal with. And every night I come home totally worried and start complaining to everyone. And my grandmother always says to me, if you're afraid of the wolves, don't go into the woods. Like I chose to accept this promotion. So I have to accept all the problems that come with it. So that's become one of my favorite proverbs. I think it's partly because my grandmother is from Russia and it says something about her culture. You know, she grew up near a forest where there was a lot of danger. Two, my favorite proverb in Portuguese is hard bread is better than nothing. I like it because it reminds me that when times are bad, you have to be grateful for the little that you have. And I thought of this proverb the other day when I was talking to a friend of mine. She's living with her parents while she looks for a job. And she isn't looking or anything because she's not earning any money. And she started complaining to me that she doesn't like the food her parents cook. Can you believe it? Three. My father is always quoting proverbs to me in Chinese. And my favorite one is, you can't expect both ends of a sugar cane to be sweet. He used it recently when I was complaining about my new apartment. Now, I'm glad I moved into the city, but I've really been bothered by all the noise. So I was telling my father this, and he responded with the proverb about the sugar cane. It means that you can't have the advantages of something without the disadvantages. It always makes me stop and think of it. Four. You know, things haven't been so great lately. I feel like I've been hit with a whole bunch of problems all at once. But I have a favorite proverb that always makes me feel better. It's every Tuesday has its Sunday. 
that's what we say in Spanish to cheer people up. You know, it means there are always going to be some bad days, but there are going to be good days too. You just have to be patient. Yeah, excellent. Okay, what do you say? What do you think about the last one? Every Tuesday has its right as it's Sunday. Okay, give me your opinion, please. We are about to finish. Okay, what do you think? Number four. No one? Be it not, the, not all the days are bad. Yes, all no, the days are bad. Yes, to cheer, to make someone happy. That's what they say in Spain, to make someone happy, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Be patient, be patient. Tomorrow is going to be better, right? Yes. It's not a bad day, but wait for tomorrow. Be patient. That's what it means. Right? Okay. Maybe you have a lot of work, you have a lot of homework, you have a tons of things to do today, but tomorrow is gonna be different. Maybe you're working hard in school or anything. Uh, so that's what it means. Just be patient. Yes, yes. Not every day is sunshine, not every day, sometimes it's cloudy, right? Like today. Depends, depends. All right, it's already six, six or one. We will continue tomorrow with the review and the last exercise of this lesson. Do you have any questions or comments about this? No teacher. No teacher. No teacher. <laughs> What's up? The last, um, the last assignment for this lesson. Okay. That is, you have to write something, this one. I'm gonna send it to you on WhatsApp and you're gonna do it, like explain a proverb with your words. That's what we do today, but speaking. So you need to have, you need to do it writing and you need to use some expressions like this one. Okay, that's gonna be an assignment for you and it's gonna be delivered with your homework. So I'll send it to you on WhatsApp right now. So we will continue tomorrow with the review. And remember Thursday, Thursday is the written exam. Okay? Okay. This week, okay. teacher, sorry. Yeah. Written is Thursday, oral is Monday. Okay. okay. Thank you, teacher. All right, see you okay. tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, see you tomorrow. Good evening. See you. Bye, teacher. Bye-bye.